Hi, my name is Emily Peloquin, speaking from Houston, Texas, and today we're going to look at something called the Hilbert Transform. Most of us might not be familiar with the term Hilbert Transform, but you might be more at home with the term envelope or TFM envelope. So the thing is, TFM envelopes are not all created equal. At first glance, an envelope may look like a smoothing filter, as the signal suddenly appears smoother and where two echoes, uh, like we have here in this example, seem to merge or blur into one. And this is why this video may help in understanding the difference between general smoothing filter envelopes and TFM envelopes uh, from the OmniScan X3, which uses a signal processing called Hilbert Transform. So the Hilbert Transform uh, generates a unique TFM envelope, and an envelope that is not only increase, uh, increases the speed of inspection, but also makes sizing easier. It enhances also your amplitude fidelity, but more importantly, it doesn't lose any relevant information. So how does that work? Well, in comparison to typical signal filters, uh, Think of the Hilbert transform like a all-pass filter, as all frequencies are allowed uh, to go through. What changes is the phase relationship of the various frequencies of the signal. So no information is being lost as compared to a regular low-pass or smoothing filter. Without going too deep into math, uh, when the Hilbert transform is applied, it is as though the operator has shifted the original signal in phase by pi divided by two radians. As we're showing here, the behavior of the Hilbert transform in the frequency domain, keeping the, the signal amplitude unchanged uh, shown on top, and shifting its phase by pi divided by two radians shown on the bottom. So this is uh, useful for generating an accurate envelope. We can see here all three components are represented. In blue, we have the original or normal in-phase A-scan signal. In green, we have the shifted uh, positive and negative pi divided by two, or the quadrature components, thanks to the Hilbert transform. And in red, the traced envelope over those two signals combined. So we can quickly see at a glance that not only we are not losing any information here, but we might actually be able to see more uh, and increase our amplitude fidelity. So let's talk about amplitude fidelity for a second. If we're looking at the RF signal sampling at five samples per wavelength in red here on the left, or at three samples per wavelength in the green here on the right, we can see that in both cases, we never meet the actual true peak of the signal or its maximum value represented by the blue horizontal dotted line. And uh, with the, the image in the middle, we can also easily see or understand why the codes are requesting a variation no greater than 2 dB for an, uh, an amplitude fidelity at lambda divided by 5, as we could lose easily as much as 6 dB here without an, em an envelope um, as we lower the sampling rate below 5. So now using the same sampling rates, but with a TFM envelope, uh, with vertical lines here representing a vertical grid, we are actually meeting our true maximum in both cases when the signal moves across the grid. But also notice the amplitude variation. So for the five samples per wavelength, we are as little as 0.04 dB variation, and still for the three samples per wavelength, as small as a 0.12 dB variation. So making again the amplitude fidelity requirement of 2 dB much easier to comply with and to achieve with a smaller sample size, which means a much faster inspection speed is possible while still keeping a very safe amplitude fidelity. So let's uh, see for, and have a closer look again at uh, the Hilbert transform envelope. 
So our true max is being met by the envelope here, but not by the original signal in blue. So the rect rectified signal uh, will often have two or more peaks rather than one true max, resulting in a doubling signal uh, as we see here on the left. Uh, and where the envelope will have a more concise max, making it much easier and more uh, accurate sizing, as we can see on the right. So the position of the peak will also be more accurate for the same reasons. And uh, so the, the doubling oscillations of a standard TFM signal does not provide any relevant information on the defect or the indication. They're simply due to the frequency characteristic of the probe, like the central frequency and the, the bandwidth, but not caused by the defect itself. So applying the TFM envelope uh, concentrates the indication analysis uh, on only the relevant signal uh, and uh, making, us, uh, making for a better sizing uh, of, in, uh, of the position, but also of the amplitude. So again, not all TFM envelopes are created equal. Uh, so now you know the difference between a filtering envelope and a Hilbert transform envelope. And for more information, please email us by scanning this QR code or visit our website at evidencescientific.com.